Hi everybody, welcome to Now What with Brit and Sean. I'm Sean. And I'm Brit. On our channel for grades K to 8, we learn new things and have some fun. Woo! Hey Sean, why are you so dirty? Well Brit, I'm going to go fishing this afternoon and I've been outside all morning trying to lift this huge rock so I could find some worms for bait. I know. Why don't you use a lever? That's a great idea! What's a lever? A lever is a simple machine. Simple machines make work easier to do. Levers are made up of a beam and something called a fulcrum. The fulcrum is the point on which the beam pivots or moves. When a force, called effort, is added to one end of the lever, the object being lifted, called the load, moves upward, like a seesaw. If the fulcrum is closer to the load, then less effort is needed to move the load. If the fulcrum is closer to the effort, then more effort is needed to move the load. That's why the fulcrum is in the middle of a seesaw, so both people can have fun. Hey Sean, where'd you go? I'm using a lever. Look, it works. There are tons of worms. Now I can go fishing. Wow, levers are so effective. Why don't people use them all the time? Well, actually we do. People use levers every day. Really? How? Well, surely you've seen some. Seesaw? No, seen some other levers. Oh. One lever you've surely seen is a wheelbarrow. A wheelbarrow? How is a wheelbarrow a lever? That wouldn't have helped me lift the rock. Well, that's true, but actually there are three different types or classes of levers. The lever you use to lift the rock is a first class lever. In a first class lever, the fulcrum is located between the effort and the load. Some other examples of first class levers are scissors and a car jack. Oh, well, what class is a wheelbarrow? A wheelbarrow is a second class lever. The load is located between the effort and fulcrum. The wheel is the fulcrum, which allows the wheelbarrow to pivot up and down. When you add effort by pulling the handles up, it's easier to lift the load. Some other examples of second class levers are a bottle opener and a stapler. Well, what's a third class lever then? A hockey stick is the third class lever. In a third class lever, the effort is located between the load and the fulcrum. The end of the stick, where your hand that's farther from the puck goes, is the fulcrum. The hand that's closer to the puck on the stick is the effort. The load is the puck. Other third class levers are a baseball bat, a tennis racket, or even your fishing rod, Sean. Wow, levers are everywhere. Exactly. Everything from a shovel, to tweezers, to a broom, even a catapult is a lever. Did you say catapult? Yes, I said catap- This is going to be awesome! Three, two, one, four! Whoa, that was a little too dangerous. I think I know a safer way to experiment with levers. I'm going to make my own mini catapult. How? I'll show you. For this activity, you're going to need five elastic bands, one of which is smaller than the others, and I'll tell you why later. You'll need eight regular sized popsicle sticks, two larger popsicle sticks, which are also called craft sticks. They can be found at craft stores, art supply stores, or even sometimes a dollar store. A plastic spoon, a pencil, a ruler, and a knife with a serrated edge. Now, the fact that we're using a knife means that you need to have an adult with you. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our larger popsicle sticks or craft sticks and we're going to actually put some notches in them. The reason why we have to put notches in them is they have to be secure when we put the elastic band around it, around them. And if there is no, if there are no notches on these popsicle sticks, then the elastic bands will slide off and the catapult will not work properly. So what we're going to do is we're going to measure about two centimeters on each craft stick. Now it's important that each craft stick is measured accurately 
or at least that they're the same. So that way, when we create our notches, they will line up perfectly. So I've now created two lines. The next step is you're going to have to get an adult and they're going to create some notches on either side of the craft sticks. And when you're creating the notches, what you're going to do is you're going to cut in on a 45 degree angle on one side and then 45 degrees on the other side. And now that we have the notches in, you can see if we line up the two craft sticks, the notches are in the same place. Remember, that's important because we're going to be wrapping an elastic band around them and it has to securely snug the two together. The next step is, the next step we're going to put our plastic spoon onto one of the popsicle sticks or the craft sticks. In order to do that, we're going to take two of the regular size elastic bands and when you're putting an elastic band on, and make sure that you're putting the spoon on the opposite side of where you put the notches, okay? Because we need to use this as our force and this is actually where we're putting our fulcrum. And we're putting elastic bands on. You wanna put the elastic band over, twist it, put it over again, and you're gonna keep doing this until maybe three or four times, maybe even five times until the spoon is snug against the craft stick. And we just slide it down like that. And we're gonna use two elastic bands to make sure that the spoon stays aligned and doesn't shift all over the place when we're using our catapult. Next, we're going to take our two craft sticks and Put them together, make sure they are aligned, and make sure that our notches are aligned together also too, so you can see our notches on both sides. And we're gonna take the small elastic band. Now the reason why we're using a small elastic band is, is we need to make sure that we wrap this enough that it's tight, and if we use a larger elastic band, there's gonna to be too much elastic band, and it'll actually slip off. And remember, because we have the notches, we don't wanna to have too much elastic in there, because we wanna make sure that it gets stuck into the notches. So maybe we'll do about three or four. And you don't want to do it too tight. If you do it too tight, then this will actually snap when you're using it. If you do it too loose, you won't have enough, enough uh, force when you're using your catapult. The next step is we're going to take our eight regular size popsicle sticks and we are going to stack them on top of each other, just like so and we're going to wrap two regular sized elastic bands around them, make sure that they are secure, and we're gonna use this as our fulcrum. And it should look something like this. And the last step, we're going to take our fulcrum, which is our stacked regular size popsicle sticks, and we're gonna take our two craft sticks that have the spoon attached and also have the small elastic, which is snugly and firmly attached in between our notches. And we're going to open the two craft sticks and we're going to place our fulcrum into it. Now, when you're using your catapult, if you notice, this is a second class lever. The reason being is that our fulcrum is placed at one end of, of the lever where our load is going to be in the middle and our force is gonna be on the very end when we're pushing down. And it kind of looks like a stapler. That's another way we can tell that it is a second class lever because we know a stapler is a second class lever. And when you're using this, you have to make sure your fulcrum can move a little bit, right? Because we're just placing inside. So what you want to do is when you're using it, you want to hold down your fulcrum and you're going to put your load in here. And usually what I like to use is I, I like to use tin foil balls or aluminum foil balls and we're going to make a few of them. And you put them in there and you pull your finger down and you release it.
That was awesome. I made a catapult too. Great. Now for the fun part. Let's go test them out. So what we did for fun is we set up a nice target and we made some, I guess, some catapult or cannonballs out of tin foil. You just take a sheet, scrunch it up, and we are now going to see who can get our cannonballs or our catapult balls into the target first. I bet I can. Let's find out. I'm still gonna try it a little bit more. This is too much fun to stop. Yeah, I did it too. Now, now what? what? Well, I already told you, I'm going fishing. What about everybody else? Well, you can keep an eye out for levers in everyday life. For fun, you can make a list of different levers you find at home and see if you can figure out what lever classes they belong to. If you had fun with us today, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel so we can have more fun together. And we'd also like to give a special thanks to Dean and Bo for helping us practice making catapults. See, See you next time! time.